Hello and welcome to The Chop Shop. My name is Dion Tucker. In this video, I'll discuss crescendos and cutoffs and how they can be used effectively when playing in an ensemble. The way we play crescendos and cutoffs can be defining characteristics of our playing, especially if we're lead players. In this video, I'll demonstrate how playing the same line can be drastically different depending on how you interpret your crescendos and cutoffs. Before we jump into that, I want to thank everybody that's been checking out these instructional videos and the Black Tremone Chronicles. It really means a lot to me and I thank you so much for your support. My Patreon page will be up and running very soon. But in the meantime, if you want to support the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can get a heads up on whenever I put out a new video. I want to jump right into this, so let me grab my horn and let's look at how we can use crescendos and cutoffs to make the same line sound different. So this is a little line that I came up with over a C7 sharp 9 chord. And I didn't put any phrasing or dynamic markings on there. Sometimes we have to make our own decisions as to how we're going to shape the line. Now when we see a line written like this and it doesn't have any phrasing or dynamic markings on it, we want to do something to add some life and shape to the line. Maybe our first instinct is to add a crescendo or a swell to the long note. And at the end of that long note, we'll use the tongue to cut off the note to make it sound more precise. Now let's check out what that sounds like. Adding those crescendos and cutoffs can definitely make the music sound more dramatic. But you want to be careful where and how often you use these techniques. Now, every band has their own way of phrasing. So most importantly, you want to use your ears to be in tune with where the crescendos and the cutoffs are happening. In this next example, I'm going to add a swell to the long notes, but I'm not going to cut them off with my tongue. Now, what I want you to listen for is how you're able to still get a clean ending without using the tongue stop at the end of the note. This is gonna require you to listen very carefully to what your lead player is doing. So make sure your ears are in tune there. And if you are the lead player, make sure you're being very consistent with where you're cutting off the note. This last example is probably a little closer to how I would go about interpreting this line. Now, I'm not going to add any crescendo or tongue cutoff to the end of the long notes. In my opinion, this will help add some weight to the overall phrase. What I am going to do, though, is add some lip vibrato at the end of those long notes just to add some more character and personality. Hopefully these examples will spark some ideas in your own phrasing and how you go about interpreting your crescendos and cutoffs. Now, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out and I'll see you next time at the Chop Shop.